In our presentation, we will describe and demonstrate the differences between Dolly and Zoom, two filming techniques intended to draw the attention of the audience and change the immediate focus of plot development. Second, we will demonstrate the plethora of effects created by utilizing these two techniques, specifically in several scenes from two of the movies we have watched as a class, There Will Be Blood and The House of the Devil. First, a dolly shot is defined as a shot taken by a camera fixed to a wheeled support, generally known as a dolly. These shots are also known as traveling shots or tracking shots, specifically when the dolly moves along a track such as the one in this image. Using dolly in, the image is magnified by physical movement through space. Modern supports often allow for a seamless, silent movement towards or away from the subject. Dolly in shots typically demonstrate the increasing significance of one or several subjects, the focus of a character's emotional status, or even making connections in the plot. In this example of a dolly in from There Will Be Blood, the oil rig is the subject. As it is magnified, so too is its importance and foreboding. In contrast, dolly out shots typically demonstrate significance of an increasing number of subjects, the opposite of the shot you just viewed. Second, a zoom shot is defined as a shot in which the image is magnified by movement of the camera's lens only. Zoom lenses have variable focal lengths, allowing a shift from a wide-angle lens to a telephoto lens without a change in focus. Whereas dolly shots are camera movements, zoom shots are changes in the optics of a lens. As we have mentioned in class, zoom is usually associated with low-budget or homemade movies making it an unpopular technique in professional cinematography. It can be useful, however, to manipulate the shot in such a way as to create image effects or to offer a unique point of view, among other uses. This next clip from the end of The House of the Devil is a prime example of a zoom-in shot. As you can tell from the stationary door frame and the smooth motion, there is no movement through space but only a magnification of the image as the focal length changes. Finally, just to make sure that these differences are clear, here is the first half of that clip added to what you just saw, juxtaposing Dolly and Zoom. As the end of the hallway fills up the frame, it is clear that we are moving through physical space, and the visual change is not just a magnification. After the pivot at the door, however, we see a sharp contrast between the movement down the hallway as the bedridden Samantha fills up the frame. Now, to demonstrate the application of the techniques that I have just defined and exemplified, here are several analyzed clips from There Will Be Blood and The House of the Devil. The next clip shows a good example of a slow dolly in from There Will Be Blood. The prophet Eli is giving a sermon to a group of people in the old church. The slow dolly in creates a center focus, which is Eli, and in turn makes him the most important aspect of the scene, thus making him the center of attention. The dolly in method allows us as the audience to pay a special attention to him, his actions, and what he is saying. 
The pace of the dolly creates a profound mood in the scene and in combination with the lighting delivers a sentiment of gloom. During the dolly in, you can also see that the people in the pews also remain in view and continue to watch Eli closely and intently. While the dolly allows us to continue to see the people and what they are focusing on, this only emphasizes the importance of Eli in the scene. Not a shout. Touch this woman with your hands and caress her. This next scene from There Will Be Blood is when Paul offers Daniel information about where to find oil in his hometown. It features a very slow dolly in. This accomplishes two things. First off, it magnifies this moment, as we will find out this is a major turning point in Daniel's oil career. Secondly, the pace of the dolly in also matches the pace of the conversation itself, and it takes a long time for Paul and Daniel to eventually settle on a price for this piece of information. We have oil and it seeps through the ground. Do you want to pay me to know well, where Just because there's something on the ground doesn't mean there's anything beneath it. Why did Standard Oil buy up land? Is it in California? Maybe. How much land they buy? I'd like it better if you didn't think I was stupid. In the following scene from House of the Devil, the camera will dolly in towards the doorknob to magnify the tension of the moment. The girls and the audience still do not know who is behind the door as we hear them approach and watch them turn the doorknob. Hi, I'm Samantha, the babysitter. Um, this is my friend Megan. In Sonoma. Very nice to meet you. Both. The next clip is an example of zoom out. A lonely Samantha stands in the middle of an illuminated room at the window. The smooth outward motion and lack of camera angle change suggest that there is no movement through physical space, but instead a change in magnification. The zoom outwards in this shot has two main effects. First, the location of the shot suggests that it is a point of view of another character outside of the house, perhaps spying on Samantha. Second, the composition of the shot reminds the audience how seemingly small and powerless Samantha remains while the night and dark house fill up the remainder of the frame. This next clip is an example of zoom in. Samantha stands at the corded phone, quickly filling up the frame. In the context of the film, Samantha is disturbed that she has yet to hear from her friend Megan. This sudden zoom in on Samantha suggests her growing discomfort with the situation and the reality that something may have gone awry. Sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again, or call your operator. The next clip displays the method of zoom, much different from that of Dolly as we've seen. In this clip from House of the Devil, the mysterious man has just shot the babysitter's best friend. After he moves her over and takes her place in the driver's seat, he then lights a cigarette and an off-angle zoom begins. The angle of the camera is aimed upward at him, already making him the superior character in the scene. In addition, he becomes even larger and more threatening to the audience. As the zoom continues and he looks away from the camera, to the front of him and to the side of his surroundings, we gather that he is plotting his next move. The zoom shot and the dolly shot can actually be used together in what is aptly named the dolly zoom. In the following clip from the movie Vertigo by Alfred Hitchcock, the camera dollies out while zooming in to create a very surreal effect mimicking terror. Because of this film, this technique will later be called the vertigo effect. 